Hi guys! So today I'm going to do another silhouette, this time of the lion. And once again I'm using a 10 by 20 uh, canvas from Michaels. So these are my pre-cut vinyls. You'll see that you get both the negative and positive side of them. And you can check them out right up here on the card tag or in the description below. There's links to my pre-cut vinyls. And these work really awesome if you want to take your acrylic pouring to the next level. And uh, also I just wanted to mention guys that with the Loli Vifi, so that's this is the silicone mat I'm working on is Loli Vifi, which are awesome for acrylic pouring and also for resin. Uh, they're now offering 10% off your entire order. So if you want, check out the link in the description and use code GEN10. I'll have it J-E-N-N-10 -N and there'll be a link in the description and that way you get 10% off your entire order when you order from Loli Vifi. So I thought I'd mention that guys, you can see their logo again and thank you so much for using my code and checking out all their products. Greatly appreciate it. So without further ado, we're going to work on this lion, roaring lion. My idea was to do gold right over black and maybe a little bit of some like, you know, some uh, reddish shoes or something or some yellow color. So I'm just going to use some Liquidex gloss varnish. There'll be a link in the description for that as well. And a big thank you to everybody for using my Amazon links. They help me out greatly and there's no extra cost to you. So thank you so much guys. You're going to see I snip when I do the pre-cut vinyls and that's just so that this border doesn't come off when you're peeling your vinyls and wreck your vinyl and stick back on itself because I wouldn't want that to happen. So I'm just going to peel off the negative side of this lion and it's super simple. This guy's not too complicated. You just got to make sure you don't... Uh, it doesn't fold in on itself and I like to put it when I do it this way in the first a third of the painting but you could definitely put it anywhere you like you could put it right in the middle here if you wanted to do a scene um, like maybe a sunset we might do that actually maybe do a sunset with one of the African trees and maybe the silhouette of its prey or something. So I might move him over actually. Let's do that. So I'll show you how I use the positive side as well of the vinyl. I'm gonna put him right about there. So he's actually right in the middle for this one. And then I'll paint a nice beautiful sunset scene on the top. Okay. So for this, you just need some Liquidex Gloss Varnish. Uh, I just have it in this, get it in the bottles or I buy it by a bucket. <laughs> so, and I use these little silicone cups. They're really great because you can see I've already used some Liquidex Gloss Varnish and then I just peel it out and I get to reuse the uh, cup. So there's no wasting. So I'm just going to pour some in here. You don't need too much. This stuff dries pretty quickly, which is great. And all I do is for this is I just peel it up a bit and I go under where the silhouette is and out. And you want just a thin layer. You don't need it super thick. Just like so and I'll just push it down still with some Liquidex Gloss Varnish on there. Nice thin layer, make sure it's not thick. Just like so. Make sure I got this over here. And you push it down while it's wet. Definitely. And I'm just making sure we get a nice good seal on that vinyl. 
So I put more gloss on top, over and under. Now sometimes when you push it over the edge, it, you might have to hold it a bit. Just right here, it might not stick until it actually dries. But that's okay. And also, I thought I'd mention, guys, in the description, I'll have video chapters now. So if you want to skip to different parts or you're re-watching videos and you just want to watch a certain part, some of my newer, longer videos, you'll see there's video chapters now. It's a new thing YouTube's doing. So, all right. Let's keep going with this guy. Just making sure I get all this area here that I'm going to have that vinyl on. You can also do a pencil, quick pencil drawing, just so you make sure you get good coverage. And then I just take some gloss, I just push it down, so make sure the vinyl's nice pushed down. I'm using the cheaper canvases so I can show you how to fix them, but if you use wood or a higher quality canvas, you don't usually have too much paint leakage or problems when you peel the vinyls off. You could definitely watch my wolf howling one and see that whole process. So I should have kind of done this little nose part. <laughs> because I have to push this side down again, but that's okay. So I just cover all this, push it down really good, under very thin coat. You don't want it super thick. We gotta come all the way over here. Cause if it's too if it's really thick with your Liquidex gloss, you might have more of the gesso peeling up than you like. If you do it on wood though, you have no issues with obviously anything pulling up, but not everybody has access to wooden canvases, so that's why I usually just do it on these Michael ones. See, and right there it might stick up. So I just have to hold it down a little bit so that it stays down. There we go. Get a good seal on it. And like I said, this stuff dries pretty quickly. So you should be good to go in, you know, a few minutes. Just like that. So I'm going to let this dry, mix up some paints, and then we'll come back and we'll do the pour and swipe. Okay, this is pretty much dry. Didn't take too, too long. And I've mixed up my colors, so I'm going to do gold. Uh, I have a little bit of yet orange. This is actually a really, really pretty. This is the Pabeo 353. It's an iridescent orange yellow. And then I've mixed up some of the Artist Loft Deep Yellow. This is Old Gold by Artist Loft. And then this is just Black by uh, Artist Loft. So it's Flow. Now you're going to see when you mix up gold with Flow Troll, it's going to look a little bit funny because the Flow Troll, when it comes out, is a milky white color. So you're probably wondering why this doesn't look like gold, but when it dries, the Floetrol dries clear. So you don't have to worry. It's going to dry nice and bright and shiny gold. So this is my swiping color for his head. And uh, I've put silicone in these three colors, the black, orange, and yellow. Just pushing it down to the bottom. And I think I'm just gonna flood this portion with some black and then add a few little bits of gold and or yellow and orange to it. So I'm just going to put this on here and I'm going to spread it out. If you have extra, don't worry, you can create a paint skin. <laughs> and you want it to just really go over the edge. Make sure everything just goes smooth. I have quite a bit of paint actually on here. Just like so. Just spread a bit over this way. And I saw like a chunky bit in here. I kind of went <laughs> over, but I can't seem to see it right now. Okay, 
I think that's some good coverage on my black. Might pull a little bit. Oh, there it is. <laughs> if you get a little chunky bit, just take it out. Put way too much black on, but that's okay. I'm going to make a paint skin anyways with the leftover. Beautiful. There we go. Now this gets very messy, so make sure you have some paper towel on hand. <laughs> and make sure to work on a good surface, like my lowly Vifi uh, silicone mat. Helps protect my tabletop. Okay, I think I'm gonna just do a few little bits of yellow, like, I want it like his mane is going out from his silhouette. So I'm just pushing some of the silicone down. I'm just going to put a bit of yellow into that black there and see how much of it comes through with the cells, even on the edge here. I know it looks a little bumblebee-ish right now. <laughs> there we go. I kind of like that. And I'm going to add a little bit of this really pretty iridescent orange in there. Kind of like so. Kind of like that. And I want it to fade into black, so I'm going to leave it there, move these over. And for swiping today, I'm going to use these transparencies. There'll be a link in the description. So after you swipe with this, you can wash them and reuse them, which is really great. So I was using paper towel before, but uh, this you can just wash and reuse. So it works really good. Now the gold, I don't have any silicone in. So I'm just going to pour it right here for now. <laughs> and uh, this one has no silicone in it. That's what gives you the beautiful lacing when you're doing your swipes. Just going to make sure that goes over. I know the gold doesn't look quite as bright right now, but it will dry bright, which is kind of nice. And then I'm just going to put the transparency lightly, let it populate, and I'm going to lift up. Just like so. <laughs> now be careful with your transparency, it's full of paint. And you don't want it to drip onto your painting. Well, maybe you do. I'm going to take some of that paint off so I can use it in my paint skin. There. Getting some good color. I'm going to grab my torch. Give it a little bit of a light torch. Now, torching just helps to pop the silicone bubbles. Kind of helps to create a few more cells. You can see they're kind of popping here and there. And I just have some light colors of the yellow and orange, which I kind of like. So I don't mind that at all. Now you're probably wondering right here, if you're worried, don't worry, because I'm just going to kind of fix it. Because so we're going to have quite a bit of paint pooling. I can't always swipe it back and go back over, but I kind of like what's happening with the uh, with the cellular action. So I don't mind that the majority of this is just going to be gold. So all I want to do is just kind of make an ice even coverage over here up to the silhouette. Now you can use a paintbrush and <laughs> use your finger. Um, definitely, or a popsicle stick. I can use the gold popsicle stick to just make sure that I get a nice even gold color right up to the edge of the silhouette. So this is gonna this gold is gonna dry right up to the edge. Make nice coverage. Beautiful gold lion head. 
once it's dry. So that'll be really cool. Nice lion silhouette. I might just kind of fix that a bit. There we go. Now I do have quite a bit of paint right here. Near the silhouette, I, it's a little bit thinner because I just spread it out nice, which you can totally do. Uh, with the pre-cut vinyls, you could swipe and like all the way and get cells right up to the silhouette, which I've done for the dolphin and the ocean horse and a few other silhouettes. You could get cells all the way up to it if you wanted to, but I this one I kind of wanted a gold lion head that faded into black. And I got some accent colors of the beautiful iridescent orange and yellow. I really like this. Look at all the cells that are happening here. It's looking really good. You can torch a bit more. You can see some of the cells will start popping. I like to get the sides too. Just be careful not to torch your vinyl. And make sure to get your sides and your corners. The corners are always the <laughs> the worst offenders for not getting paint all the way down the sides, but there you have it. That is the lion. I'm excited because I can't wait to do a beautiful uh, African scene here. I'm thinking silhouette as well with the sunset and stuff. So I think that'll be really cool with maybe the lion's prey of a zebra's or something like that. So. But we're going to have to let this dry. It's going to take a while. Sometimes people ask how long does this take. Uh, depends on the size of the canvas and the amount of paint. So this one probably three to four days. Some larger canvases they could take a week to a week and a half to dry. It just kind of all depends. Uh, make sure it's on a level surface. That's very important otherwise all your uh, <laughs> all your paint will just start running off of it and then you won't have anything left when you come back to it. <laughs> and if it's on a level surface, it should dry the way you see it, which would be awesome. If you have to, just kind of pick up some paint, fix any spots that are uh, a little bit bare on the sides here. And voila! So for you guys, that was a split second, but for me, I had to wait days. <laughs> Um, the, everything is dry now on the beautiful line silhouette. I did see that some of it lifted off, but it's probably because I didn't let the vinyl dry completely because I was trying to do the video. But no worries, every time stuff happens and I get to show you guys how to fix things and stuff. I love how the gold fades out and it's like his mane is fading into the black here. You're going to see there's a little bit of white happening here. So I'm just going to fix it. So it's probably just I spread it a little too thin near the vinyl. But because this is just straight gold, all I'm going to do is just paint that in wherever there's a little bit of white. And that's just probably because the I put it a little bit too thin on the near the near the silhouette easily fixable just make sure to push down and away so that you're not pushing into the vinyl and you can see his little nose here if I just push that down and I can just get it nice and even and I can also just hand paint this back in too. I am going to peel off the vinyl. You just take your time, go slow, and we'll fix anything that happens. Like I said, I like to use the cheaper canvases because that's what most people are using. If you use wood or a higher grade one, you don't usually get any issues with peeling off the uh, Finals. Let's 
Sometimes with the cheaper canvases you do get some issues. But because I made this thinner around the silhouette, whoops, shouldn't be too bad. Just gonna peel that off. <laughs> now a handy thing to have when you're taking your vinyls off is an X-Acto knife. So far I haven't had any, oh, there's some. <laughs> Just as I was about to say, so far I haven't had any of the gesso peel up. Boom, we have a little bit, but that's okay. I'll show you guys how to fix it. And not, it is not lost. He said everything with it is fixable. Just takes a little bit of extra love. Here, so let's do near his nose and his face. Whoops. There we go. Perfect. And voila, the lion. Now any of those spots I said that were a little light near the edges. I'm just, I can just clean them up because I didn't do cells all the way to the edge. And normally if you do do cells all the way to the edge, you won't have this issue because I just made it super thin paint. But because it's only one color, I can just paint in where it was kind of light. And you'll see that the gold darkened down because the flow troll is now dry so it looks really good I might have to uh, dremel that first or sand it I should say <laughs> not so much dremel it all right I'm gonna grab my dremel so you can just use some sandpaper for the bumpiness if you do get some leaks underneath or you can use I'm just using a little handheld dremel it's Dremel 8200. I'm going to put it this way because it's a bit easier for me to sand it. And let's see. I'm going to zoom you guys in a little bit so you can really see me sanding. And all I want to do is I just want to make sure that right here I can feel the bumpiness of the paint. And I'm going to paint this whole side anyway, so I'm not really too worried, but I don't want this raised paint to be there. So I'm just sanding it flat. That's basically all I'm doing. So. So you'll see I just kind of kept the Dremel flat, like like on an angle that was close to the canvas instead of straight up and down. Like I said, you can take hand sandpaper and clean it off and stuff. And that totally works too. I just use the Dremel because it's a little bit quicker. And then I just kind of make sure that it's all nice and smooth for the most part. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna fix up some of the gold. So I'm gonna zoom you back out again. There you are. <laughs> so I'll just fix up a few of the gold spots. I probably should have waited till uh, I was done sanding because <laughs> I couldn't exactly wipe the area because the paint was wet, but I'm just filling in kind of where those little white spots are. If I get some over, I'm not too worried. I'm going to use the positive vinyl to protect it when I get to that part. So well, we have a little bit of sanded sanded off canvas. 
So if you, this happens to you, don't worry guys, because it's all fixable. You can make mistakes with acrylic paint and then go back in and fix it. Just like so. Just fixing up. If I go over a bit, I'm not too concerned because when I put the positive vinyl on, it's going to protect him. And that way I'll just be end up painting over whatever I actually did go over with gold. So I'm not too worried. I do want to make sure though that I do cover this area with gold that is already there. Just picking up a bit more. Like so. Now, to fix these spots, basically you just take some gesso and you just put gesso in the holes that happen. So like I said, if you use a wood canvas, you won't have obviously any of these issues. If you use a higher quality canvas, there won't, the holes won't be so big. But for the most part, most people are buying the Michaels canvases. So that's why I usually do it with the Michaels ones. And all I'm doing is I'm just taking some gesso. I'm just using some Liquid X gloss gesso. And I'm just filling the little holes, even if I created some with the uh, Dremel when I sanded, I can just fix it with some gesso. So I'm just putting it back in, just like so. So if you know somebody that loves the Lion King, <laughs> they could do, a, you could do a silhouette for them or maybe they, as a gift. You could definitely do one of these. Or if you know somebody that went to Africa and you want to do something special, you could do them a lion silhouette. It would be kind of cool. And just have fun with it. Now these are bigger holes, so I might have to do a few, a few layers of gesso, but that's okay. Just want to lightly get coverage over those holes. The smaller ones are pretty simple, but some of the larger areas, if you get a bigger area that peeled off, just take a nice big gob of gesso and cover that entire area. Just lightly glide it. If you have to do a second layer after, do a second layer of gesso to fix the hole. And that is fixing of the holes. So I gotta let this dry thoroughly, but just wanna show you the back. You're gonna see right here, a little bit of the gesso came through. Don't wipe this. <laughs> just leave it as is, let it dry, even though it's bumpy. It's on the back of the canvas, nobody sees it, so just let it dry. Because if you wipe it, you will ruin everything you just did on the front. So just an FYI there. And we'll let this dry and I'll come back and we'll paint the negative space. Okay, this is all dried and the gesso is good and dry. So now it's time to apply the positive side of the vinyl, which you get with the pre-cut vinyls. And this is just going to protect my acrylic pour on this side while I paint the scene on the negative side. So I just got to find a, there we go, a little lip in order to just peel off this vinyl. And just be careful you don't uh, have it go onto itself. like stick back onto itself. Whoops. Didn't snip that one. There we go. 
and you want to just line it up with what you already have. It should be an exact match technically because it's pretty much the exact opposite. And don't worry like about your pour. This final is, as you can see, not going to wreck it or damage it. But you can use it to protect it while you paint this negative side. So I wanted to do a sunset with probably some silhouettes on top, but first I'm just going to paint the whole thing as a sunset and that way I can just uh, let it dry and then do the silhouettes on top. I got a big brush for this and what you want to do is when you're painting and doing like a gradient, just really make sure that you push down and pull away so you're not pulling towards the vinyl you're pulling away from the vinyl and that way you don't have to worry about accidentally lifting up on that vinyl and it's just helping to protect your painting in essence so I got the same colors that I used in here the yellow and the Pabeo 353 it's this iridescent orange which is super pretty and I think I'm going to go from like yellow to the orange and then down here is going to be black so I'm not too worried. I probably won't do right here but I'll do up here as a gradient. And with acrylics if you just put quite a bit of paint, sometimes I put way too much paint, <laughs> but you can always put it back into the tubes to spread it out. And if I have maybe about here the orange. Super pretty. So like I said, you just really want to make sure that when you're going this way, you're just making sure that that vinyl's staying down. And that's what I'm just gonna concentrate on first for the first few little bits is that I'm pushing down on that vinyl and making sure that it's just staying down with the paint. That way I can actually go towards it. And I might have put way too much orange as usual. I put too much paint, but <laughs> that's okay. I will spread it around. The more the merrier. It's going to be a very bright sunset just like so and this iridescent paint isn't super uh, it can be fairly thin so if you put quite a bit just like this you can do a gradient now I need to bring in some of my yellow make sure that I push down on this See, I might need more yellow in order to do the, the blending. And it's all about just applying it. When you have quite a bit, it's easier to mix with acrylics, just like so. you can make a really pretty sunset. Now I'm gonna need more yellow. <laughs> Not enough yellow, too much orange. Because, whoops, I need some paper towel. Got too much orange on my brush. I want the top to be a nice yellow. Make sure to get the edges so I might put a bit more yellow just so that this top area is all yellow and make sure to flip it up and really get your edges while you're doing your mixture 
because even this yellow can be a little bit light. There we go. That's looking better. Now I push down and away from the vinyl. Just like that. And with this amount of paint, you're going to see that it'll be easy with your acrylics to really blend. And I try and keep the paintbrush nice and more on the same plane as the, like not straight up and down, but more on the same plane as the canvas. And this I'm just trying to blend while not hitting the tripod stand so that you guys can see. Might need a little bit of yellow there. And just lightly blend it, creating a really pretty, nice gradient of a sunset. Just like that. Beautiful. Now I'm not too worried about getting down here because I'm going to actually put black. I could put my black on now and then actually define it after because I'll actually have like a shape to it for the ground and then have the silhouettes. So I'm pretty happy with that. I might add a little bit of extra yellow. Don't be afraid to even just put it on your paintbrush just right here. a bit thicker right there there we go so that is how you can do a gradient and let's add some black Just because I already have the vinyl on, so I might as well put my black on. And just get the orange and yellow out. I think it's going to look really cool. And I'll get all the edges and make sure again with the vinyls pushed down and away. So that's why I'm kind of going down, just to make sure that that's gonna stay down. I got quite a bit of black on here. With the edge here, you can kind of just follow where you would, the main would kind of go. Once again, just kind of keeping it close to the same plane as the canvas. Oh no! Well, that stuff happens. <laughs> Guess I'll have to go back in and fix it. <laughs> See? Even everything sometimes happens. <laughs> Like a little dot of black gets over there, of course. Just like that. Now I gotta fix that little part. And of course I have a whole bunch of black paint on my brush. Which is the worst. <laughs> so I'm just gonna wash this off. Or actually I can grab another one. Just grab another brush. And I'll have to add some. So if that happens to you, just add some of your color onto your new brush. Just like so. And let's just wipe it out like it wasn't even there. And you'll see I'm not perpen I'm going not going up and down at a 90 degree angle. I'm going nice along the plane of the canvas. I love it. So I'll have to let this dry 
and then I will come in with the black and I'll define the landscape probably put one of those big beautiful African trees with the silhouette in here of maybe the lion's prey like a zebra or something in there up on the hill or something so this beautiful sunset has dried and it's looking really good just a little bit of black here I have to touch up but other than that it worked out really good took all night to dry so just an FYI because I used quite a bit of paint but you can just leave it on a level surface and let it dry now is the time to do the silhouettes of the African animals and fix up a bit <laughs> of my landscape here so I just put a little bit of black paint this is straight black acrylic paint in my little silicone cup and what I want to do now is to actually get a nice clean edge because I just kind of roughed it in I didn't actually do a nice clean edge because the orange was quite wet so I'm going to fix up just a little bit here that's why I haven't taken off the uh, the vinyl yet is because I'm gonna do a nice clean edge for this landscape now you can just feel free to mark it down however you like if you want a rocky landscape or <laughs> You want to do the big rock here for the like the Lion King kind of, you can do that. But I'm just going to do a nice flat kind of looking landscape. And if you were lucky enough to go to Africa and see a beautiful sunset, you could reference your photos and paint that scene. Uh, if not, you can definitely search the web for some inspirational photos to kind of paint from especially nowadays there we go beautiful so that is just a nice clean edge for the landscape and you could leave this on just to protect your painting while you're doing the rest of this painting that's totally an option too. I did print off just a reference photo for a big tree that I'd like to do and it's one of those big beautiful trees they have in Africa so I might just paint that in right now. I'm gonna use my big brush at a 90 degree angle Just like so to kind of get some of the thicker branches in in the tree trunk so I'm just referencing what I see in the photo they have these really cool kind of like spread out along the top for the tree part I might need a different brush just to do a smaller smaller trunk <laughs> so I have a whole bunch of brushes here this one's got more of a point on it so you can use that to it's maybe even smaller than that good to have a wide variety of brushes on hand for when you want to paint your landscape and with the tree branches I'm gonna have all the leaves or brush up at top but for looking at the reference photo most of the bottom half of the tree is just trunk and branches not so much the leaves the leaves tend to spread out up top and just make it up as you go look at your reference photo and just kind of mark it in so I'm gonna keep going 
I'm gonna paint the whole silhouette and then I'll do the reveal of the vinyl. So that was me just painting in the African silhouettes of the different animals. I got an elephant, a zebra, and an antelope. And then their beautiful trees they have against the beautiful orangey yellow sunset. I just used a, uh, this is an art liner pen just to sketch in the animals, which you can totally do. And then you're just painting over it with black anyways. So. If you wanted to, you could try doing some pencil first, although it doesn't show up very well on canvas, so that's why I use the art pen. Now it's time for revealing the silhouette of the lion. Ooh, pretty. And you can keep this portion because you can see it just protected it, but you could do another acrylic pour the opposite way with this portion if you like. So I'm going to stick that up there. That looks awesome. I just have to do a few touch-ups along the edge uh, right here in the black. So I'll just use some gold and some black to kind of touch up here. But other than that, I think it looks pretty awesome. So I just want to say a huge thank you guys for watching, subscribing, liking, and commenting on my videos. I greatly appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. And I hope you enjoy them. And thank you for using my Amazon links. They're in the description below. They help me out greatly. And I hope you guys enjoy creatively crafting with your acrylic pores and stuff. Thanks, guys.